Lots happened yesterday in the world of Eurovision, but the most important thing was Malta. Uh, and you know, of course, competing with so many other selections, you know, uh, you really have to have something that makes you stand out. And, and Malta certainly did. They had one thing that really made them stand out in a fantastic way, right? Ads. It goes in my head, gotta break the taboo. No, we will never be criminals. You had ads everywhere, everywhere, and you know, I understand you need to have ad breaks. I don't understand why you need to have them all the time. You fill the time with ad breaks, talking for 20 minutes before something happened, walking in a library, some fantastic numbers that, yes, I was also critical and then I was like, you have some fantastic numbers. You had the you new Eurovision star there, he's awesome. And you had some amazing dance numbers, and you even had Brad Leslie! You had so much going for you, but you built so much momentum to do nothing all the time. Why? Malta, we need to have a little talk right now. I feel like it's a one-way talk right now because I'm talking, you aren't really saying much, Malta, but I love you, Malta. Malta, you have done something incredible here because you have sent the song Taboo. And I feel like it was a pretty strange selection at times. They had some really good songs, but I wasn't blown away by anything. And then Taboo showed up and nothing was able to, you know, top it that I come beforehand or follow it really it, it's incredible and I it's I never seen you know such a clear winner since maybe Jamie Lee from Germany a few years back when she like dominated everything so it was so clear that this was going to be the winner it got the most points from the public but also only 12s from the jury I think it says something I think you have a golden song here and I think that taboo is going to be a great great track it's a great message I'm all for that I think it's important but maybe it was a bit stereotypical in the way its lyrical content went um, but I just think she has an amazing voice I think the production of the song is incredible and when I listened to it before the final I instantly loved it I think it was just great it was incredible um, and I was very excited to see how they would do the show never expected them to do it like this and I'm so happy they did it, because I didn't think Malta would go all the way with this, and they did. It feels like something that will instantly get people's attention. Some of these songs that have come out needs more time, and you don't have that much time when you're gonna reach an audience of over a hundred million people. You don't have in days, weeks to really build yourself up, you have three minutes. You have also a postcard. You have postcards, and you have three minutes, and then maybe you have some scripted small talk that comes up in the green room it needs a bit more personality to really hit home but it's also one of those songs that is maybe the one so far which is the most instantly grabbing of attention and grabbing of love but I do think that maybe the setting of Malta made it that more anonymous because every time they were building up to something, every time something big happened, there was an ad, an ad coming up. I don't want to see because I'm supposed to believe that she is going through an internal struggle and fighting through it and surviving and being like, yeah, look at me, I did it. I don't want to see fruit. I don't want to see a juice that I can buy if I'm from Malta. I don't want to see that. I want to see her being focused. I want to see her being, you know, shining through because she just overcomes something. But I don't get that because I'm seeing an ad and it's not like that. that's like the be all end all is, oh, it's a, you ruined everything. But it ruins the connection. It ruins the thing where I'm supposed to invest in this song, but I'm not wanting to see ads pop up everywhere. I'm not looking at this show because I want to know about fruit. 
and I don't care about all those washing machines that has a seven year warranty. Malta, uh, that's not for me. I don't vote for the washing machine. I don't vote for grandma's cookies. I don't vote for a new car. I don't vote for a water park, but I vote for the song. But of course I couldn't vote, so what's the point? Maybe Malta loves voting for ads. Uh, we had this competition in Norway actually um, yesterday uh, where it was an ad competition where you vote on ads but there you go into it looking at ads for an hour and vote on and spend money on the ads because you love the ads and here you should spend money on the artists because you want to you, you spend money by voting so they can make it to your revision so you can listen to the song again on the big stage what why? Why the ads? Why was it a three hour long commercial with some talking in between and then some, oh by the way, we got some artists, here they are in the library. What? And then they have a voting sequence that takes five minutes. What's happening? Like that's... I, so much they could have done, but... Why? Three hours, why three hours? Way too long. I, I don't, also don't want to look at the logo for a minute because, well, we need to fill time. I have more time for celebration instead of, oh, here's the song, but here's also everyone who worked on this. Uh, what? And every opening of a postcard open with an ad. An ad. So many ads, but uh, yeah, uh, but either way, um, I would rather watch, you know, all those ads again than watch the Comfort Drops performance from Melody Festival. Good day! <laughs> Take care.